Hey fam, hope you guys are doing great. I'm Julian Dares, I'm doing just fine. So today, uh, I believe I have another good subject for you. We are going to ask ourselves, who between the PFL and the UFC made a bad or good business decision? And this is not only in regard to Francis Ngannou signing with the PFL and the UFC not being able to come to term with him, but also in regard to the UFC making of John Jones the poster boy of their promotion, the guy who represent their brand, the ambassador of their company, the bearer of their flag. The reason why this video is actually out is uh, uh, a follow up on uh, one of Chael Sonnen's video who finally admits and understand that uh, what happens inside of the cage is one thing but that the image of your champion inside and outside of the cage is what makes the business what brings in your primetime tv slots your primetime tv deals uh, the primetime sponsorship deals to compete with the other major orga sports organization like uh, baseball like football hockey etc and what have you to be honest with you, um, I've been releasing this video uh, for quite some time now with the same subject. Uh, I just couldn't understand why all of these cheerleaders of the UFC, uh, the Chelsea Sonnen, Brandon Sharp, Michael Bisping, uh, John Hannick, uh, were praising John Jones like if he was Jesus Christ himself. I mean, hell, Hannick even called him uh, the perfect champion, nothing less. Right? Like if they really didn't know who John Jones was and what type of demons he was bringing here along with him. Uh, but listen, without further ado, let's go. Uh, let's let the show begin. Uh, but before we start, please take one second to, to like, uh, subscribe and most especially share the video. Right. So what I propose we do. It's just we're going to read some of we're going to go through some of the quotes that I took from the 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 uh, Chel Sonnen's video, and we're going to go from there and uh, develop uh, a, a little. We're going to develop a little bit more the subject after that, right? Uh, because I'm telling you, what's going on here is pretty 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 interesting, right? So what do we have? Let's go with the first quote, right? We in the image business here, right? So now what we have here is pretty, I mean, he's going straight to the point. And he's not talking about what's going on inside of the cage. He's not talking about judo throw. He's not talking about rear naked choke. He's not talking about spinning back fist. He's not talking about all of this shit happening in the cage. He's telling you that image of your champion is what brings in the business and when he's talking about the business i guess you guys know what he's talking about he's talking about the bag he's talking about the money the real one right so let's keep going let's keep going let's not stop there right because we got some interesting stuff out there that we got image that sells that's what does the business so when he says we got image that sells it means that we also got image that don't sell and if he's trying to dust off Mr. Jones, right, it's because he understands that right now, Jones' image is, is not selling. Jones' image is, is not what is selling, right? As much as he understands that image is what does the business, right? What, again, what brings in the money. And he's not talking about uh, what have you, again, your, 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 your record, in the in the octagon right he's not talking about like a 27 and 0 record with uh, uh 10 ko's four four six submission that's not what he's talking about he's talking about image outside the the the, the 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 cage that image that makes the business that brings in your money right let's keep going let's keep going it gets interesting it gets interesting i understand the sport is the punches and the kicks but we in the image business here, right? I mean, you, you can understand kind of the, 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 the line here, uh, how you follow. I mean, always consistently, he is hammering the image is the business. And this phrase here tells it all. This quote here tells it all because he's telling you what's going on inside of the cage and he's telling you what is going on outside of the cage. 
and he understand the sport he understand that okay inside of the cage what counts i mean uh, okay you got your record 27 and 0 uh you got a submission you got flying knees you got everything all these things that come in inside of the cage and he's not even talking um, i mean we when we're talking about image business as well we're not talking about like live uh live gates we're not talking about uh uh, a pay-per-view right we're talking about the image so we understand what's going on inside of that cage the punches the kicks the records right but this is not what sells this is not what brings in the real money what brings in the real money is the image because image is the business right image is what brings us the big money the bag right so let's read it again i understand the sport is the punches and the kicks i'm not dumb i understand the the sport is the punches and the kicks and you can be like the quote the your, your, your record the, the the pound for pound best okay that comes with it that's good but that's not what brings in the money for the company what brings in the money for the company is the image of that champion because that image itself sells again it's a direct quote from chelsea separating what's inside of the cage from what's outside of the cage and what's outside of the cage that's where you make your bread and butter that's where you make yeah that's where you break the bank that's why you make your big money for the company as simple as that right now guys th there's something very very important right i mean we need to understand uh we need to understand what uh, what uh, Uncle Chell and the UFC are trying to pull out here because, I mean, it is a bold one. What they're telling us basically is, we know John Jones is a terrible person, right? We know John Jones did terrible things. And as you can see, they also understand that image is what sells, what makes the business. Chell just said it. And that John P. D. Jones with his uh, criminal track record, right? He's not good for business. He's not good for UFC business. I mean, we're talking about a dude who's got multiple counts of uh, violence against women. Seems like he likes to beat up on women. Multiple counts of testing positive to PD. Seems like he lost to cheat. Aggravated hit and run charges. Fleeing from the scene of an accident without any assistance to the, the person he crashed in with. DWI, driving while intoxicated charges, right? Negligence use of firearms, testing positive to cocaine. Looks like he liked to sniff that, 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 that white powder. So now, I mean, guys, the UFC guys are not that dumb. I mean, there are a lot of things, but dumb is not what they are. They, 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 they don't have any scruples. They're liars. They're hypocrites. Uh, they have no ethics or morals and we know for a fact that they don't give a shit about fighters right so because they're not dumb they do understand that their ufc heavyweight pd champion john cokehead jones he's not a good human and please let me be clear about this one for most people including myself a champion is basically a superhero uh someone who is uh, strong fearless someone who's honest uh, someone I would say was noble and has a big sense of honor, right? Due to, uh, I, I would assume, the martial arts philosophy, right? Of respect and everything. Uh, someone that will get out of this way to save the, the, the weak and help uh, the poor and the needy. I mean, uh, some kind of Robin Hood as well or that you have in there. Someone who, let's say, wants to be a good influence and a model for the upcoming generation. Uh, a role model basically someone a parent can look at and say uh, i want my kid to be just like that right let's go look at the guy that i want you to you know to be like but what do we have here right we have a guy who is cheating uh, by using pd he got caught twice already making us wonder really how many times he hasn't been caught a coward that does not have the courage to face his responsibilities but rather run away from them like in that uh, hit and run Right, where he left without uh, giving any assistance, a violent man that has the habit of hating women, right? An egotistic liar that uses his star status to try to avoid justice. That's a champion for you. 
I mean, this is not really the type of human you want to be carrying your, your brand, to be the ambassador of your promotion. But I guess uh, that does not bother the UFC or Dana White, or does it? Because since, uh, uh, since they, they, they've been trying to fix that, the UFC, and to fix it, the UFC, you know what they're doing. They're sending their most valuable soldier on the front line yet again, Chel Sonnen, sir. For some well orchestrated propaganda to tell us that basically uh, uh, John Chicken Jones has changed. That it's been three years since Jones has told us that he was moving to heavyweight. And that in these three years, they don't know how. They don't know how. But he's a newborn Christian. That in those three years, he has matured. And that now, he's basically walking on water. Just like Jesus Christ. Kind of find it hard to believe. Because should I remind you that John Bonus Jones, he's 34 years old, right? And that during his lifetime, he has had many cycles of three years. To grow, to mature, to change, right? He has had about 11 to 12 of those three year cycles. And what they want us to make us believe is that because he's hanging out with Morris Green... He has matured and he has changed. Again, I find it hard to believe. Let me ask you this. What would he change? What would be the incentive for him to change? When without changing, an organization like the UFC is ready to reward his uh, violence against women, right? He's ready to reward his cowardice of not assisting someone in danger. He's ready to reward his hit and run charges by offering him a pot of gold, a truck loads of money, sending the message that no matter what he does, he will get what he wants. What should he change? The point I'm trying to make here, basically, guys, is whether you believe Chell or not, why all of a sudden Chell Sonnen, probably sponsored by the UFC and Dana White, feels the need to release a YouTube video that tried to clean him up, right? That tried to clean up John Bogus Jones' image. You guessed it, because image why he is not a draw. He is not a draw to get the real business like Chel Sonnen said, right? I mean, we're, we're not talking about pay-per-view here. We're not talking about live gates here. We're talking about, I mean, TV deals. We're talking about uh, talking uh, about uh, major sponsorship deals. We're talking about new audience. We're talking about big business. We're talking about big money. I mean, this is no joke. And when you look at the PFL with Francis Ngannou, they does not have to do all that weasel-dazzle with Francis Ngannou. They have signed the, the total package, basically, right? Someone who actually uh, is here to protect us from people like John Bogles Jones and the UFC. A fearsome champion in the cage, for one. A good person that risks his own well-being for others, right? We've seen that. Someone with integrity, right? And self-respect. Someone uh, that valued more his freedom, than the money thrown at him to bend over and get it, right? Someone with a, an inspiring story that sells itself. And also, he's got his track record to show it, right? A story that I would say is the stuff of legend from sand mines of Africa, his journey through the jungle, the desert, risking his life multiple times, crossing the ocean, being arrested, sent back multiple times, I mean, we, 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 we know his story with sheer determination he, and abnegation. Cross again the ocean, finally making it into France. Sleeping in parking lots. His epic battles with Stipe, losing the first one. And coming back to get the title from him with a resounding second round knockout. His epic contractual battle against the almighty powerful juggernaut that is the UFC and Dana White where he was advocating for other people's fight other fighters rights right negotiations that reached their pinnacles I would we, we remember with a showdown with Cyril Gann where we remember and we know 
that he was not only fighting Cyril Gann, but was also fighting uh, Dana White and the UFC, right? To come out victorious with a messed up knee. Can you imagine that? With a messed up knee. With a messed up knee, took down Cyril Gann, Dana White and the UFC the same night, right? To fight his contract out and become a non-restricted, unbeaten free agent champion, right? We remember his free agency uh, looking for promotion again uh, with uh, the, the UFC, the propaganda of Dana White trying to derail his negotiation uh, by tarnishing his credibility and his reputation. He's signing off the most lucrative deal in the MMA story finally, one that provide him the freedom uh, he always wanted and that uh, the UFC was refusing to give him, right? And of course, and of course, not forget PFL Africa. And when we look at him, I mean, new page of his story uh, and of his legacy, please, inside and outside of the ring are being written every day, right? So this is really, I mean, this is really the stuff of legends. What a movie is made that. I mean, what a movie it will make. So when I'm asking you the question right now, right? Who made, who made the best decision between the PFL and the UFC? It is really a rhetoric question at this point, right? Is it the UFC by signing John Cokehead Jones and giving him all that money and not coming to terms with, John, with, with Nganu? Or the PFL by signing Nganu? Really, the question is rhetorical because the answer is, is a no-brainer one. Definitely the one that made the best decision right now from what I can see. Especially when I see all these guys trying to clean up and to dust off uh, John Bonehead Jones. I mean, this is a no-brainer. The PFL made the best decision. The UFC kind of made a poor one. The clock is ticking. So guys, let me, let me know what you're thinking. Let me know uh, if you agree, if you don't agree. Uh, no matter what, again, leave a comment. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think.